we we are live with the podcast today we have a the first podcast with two guests actually oh and <laughs> rightfully so this is this is a good one uh to start out with two guests we have kaide and tens how are you both doing today if one of, uh, one of you wants to i guess i'll start first or do you want to start first hi um i'm doing good <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> yeah so am i i'm doing pretty well how about yourself i'm i mean there's no words to describe on how you know this this opportunity I, i'm doing fantastic um i had a little bit of a mini freak out earlier um just because of the circumstances that i was put into today but uh it was a good one i talked to my mom just like five minutes before getting on here and she was like this is this is everything that you you wanted for so long Aww. and and it was good words from from mama texture um, oh that's so sweet <laughs> yeah so i'm super excited to, to talk to you guys today um i do i do want to start out um i'm going to direct this one towards uh tyson so you started out obviously playing cs um is that was that your what was your first game that you really got into and grinded and put a lot of hours into uh yeah def definitely cs like I, I initially i played cs i used to play like a bunch of mini games so like have you, have you ever played cs texture yes i have yeah you know like the mini game lobbies yeah so like the multi games i used to play like just the absolute shit ton of that so i probably have like three thousand hours minimum in those servers alone and I'd just play those servers and then eventually like I started playing like the actual game. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, all that training for mini games paid off and I was like hitting nutty shots, I remember. <laughs> and I was like, damn, like this is actually kind of fun. And I started grinding really hard. How do you know how many hours you have in like now? Like after everything is done in CS? Uh I definitely have over ten thousand. I know on my Steam account it says like a little under nine thousand, but I, I played on like other accounts that do you mm -hmm. have over a thousand hours? That that's gotta be the most like you played a game, right? Yeah. <laughs> how how do you feel about that, Kaide? About ten thousand hours in a game? What was it again? I think when I first started dating him, we calculated it, and that was like over a year or so, <laughs> like just sitting and playing a game. I was like, oh my goodness! But honestly, I think in the end, it definitely paid off because he's super successful now and. I'm really happy to see it so yeah yeah i mean you know there's a lot of people i consider it might be odd for you to hear but you hear it all the time i consider you to be the best player in valorant like there there's there was one clip on haven where you go out onto the flick onto like the a connector or you know you know what oh I'm yeah the, with yoru right yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, Tyson, that like insane flick shot yeah. that you did, and you even reacted to it. Yeah. Oh, you're talking about like the 360s? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah that, that one was cool. That's that's <laughs> that's a clip I send to people who don't understand Valorant, but they're like, that was that was crazy. <laughs> like, there's that's just insane. I'm like, yeah, that's that's tense. He's he's the best. Um, <laughs> is it? Do you do you? I if I'm not mistaken. Does your grandma have a lot of hours in League? Dude, is... my grandma has my, she has more hours in League than I do in probably both CS and <laughs> Valorant combined. Like her her League hours is actually disgusting. I think she's like the second highest level in League right now. Like she's almost like level a thousand. Yeah. And I don't even know like how you play that much and how you're able to grind that hard. But my my grandma's like. She's a super gamer. Like before that, she played Path of Exile. She goes really, really into Path of Exile. She played Final Fantasy. So she's really like into MMOs. And then I introduced her to League or my uncle did. And then she's just started grinding it. <laughs> so it runs in the family. <laughs> I, I, didn't know if that, I didn't know if that was a joke or not. Like Oh, it's, oh no, it's crazy. It, it's serious. Yeah, when she hits a thousand hours, we're gonna be going over and getting her like a cheesecake with a thousand on it. <laughs> like the level a thousand. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It was funny. Kadi and I were talking to her. She's like, "How how long do you think?" And she looked at us and she's like, "Less than a month." <laughs> or something <laughs> like that. Crazy. Um, so, w 
I do I, I don't want to talk about CS too much because I do want to get more onto current stuff but I do want to talk about the process of your thought process on on switching to Valorant was that a big a big decision in your head to I mean because it is kind of like a leap of faith but it is also Riot that is backing it so how was that for you yeah logically when I was thinking about the move um I knew that so originally what happened was I didn't have too great of a time in CS and then also there was this thing happening where there was two leagues trying to like control the pro scene in uh CSGO so it was Flashpoint and then ESL and so like I, I personally think that the division of like leagues and not having everyone on the same league or like the same page it kind of like doesn't create the best pro environment and therefore I didn't really see Counter-Strike is that sustainable and I already I've seen League of Legends and Riot how they do stuff and I knew for a fact what the fuck there's a fly in my room <laughs> uh, I, I know for a fact that they'll know how to run a game and run an esport mm -hmm. um, I, wh when did you come in when did you guys start dating and where was uh, Tyson at at that point Kaide um so we actually met what Ty so, like in well, the first time we met, I would say was when I was in grade eight. You were in grade eight as well. Yeah. Um, but we didn't really talk too much. I would say it was mostly like senior year of high school, uh, was when we started to get to know each other a lot better. Um, like just before graduation and everything, and that was just before he moved, and then he moved over to LA. And then he came back for a player's break. And I think that's when we started talking more again. And that's when we like made it official. And so um, I'm just trying to, like, I don't want to ramble too much about all of this, but um, yeah, so he signed with C9 and he came back. And is that when you got benched, Ty? Or not uh, yet? I didn't oh, get not yet, yet, right? No, no. Yeah, he wasn't benched yet, but. So he was here for a player's break. We started dating and then he flew back out and then he was getting homesick. So I flew over there for a bit and like I wanted to meet like some of his teammates and stuff. And, like I don't want to get too into it or anything, <laughs> but um, yeah, I don't know. Everything felt kind of like off with just like team dynamic, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, so like I flew back because I'm, I'm still, uh, I was still in school and I still am, but um. And then after he got benched and it was kind of, for me, it was rough seeing all of it kind of like, not necessarily crumble, but everything that he was so passionate about, like when we first started dating kind of die out. And, um, you know, like I really cared for him. Like I, you know, I've seen the progression of like, or what I would consider for him, like the lowest of the low for gaming all the way to his, like, not even his peak now, but you know, like he's, yeah doing so well and it just makes me so happy to see like all of his success and just kind of like it unravel kind of in front of me but yeah were, seen basically from the start to now mm -hmm. were you into that scene at all before that or so what what has it been like to to kind of come into all this you know um it's been kind of crazy and surreal I don't know. Like I remember when we first started dating, he uh, he, he would stream um, CS on Twitch, mm -hmm. and like I, so I got kind of like an idea of what it was and it's like the streaming platform. But like I never watched anybody, so I didn't really know who else was on it. Like whenever I had to go to the washroom or something, I would ask him to tilt his camera down so I could walk <laughs> across the camera because I hated being on screen. I hated being filmed anything. So you know, I wanted to keep it super super private for uh, you know like just for the sake of both of us, I think, mm -hmm. more than anything else. And then it's when you started like gaining popularity in Valorant and I had a f like a few friends uh, on the internet scene um, as well as like Tyson kind of like trying to convince me to start streaming as well. They were like, oh, you should just see how you like it. Um, and so I haven't even streamed for a full year yet, but last year on October 31st was like our first stream together. And the first time like his fans got to meet me and we did like a pumpkin carving kind of thing for Halloween. And uh, that's like the first day that I actually started streaming and kind of took off from there. 
what has it been like for you, uh, Tyson, to see to see how? Because she she's not just you know your girlfriend who's who just streams. She is a streamer. Like she's a good streamer and very respected, and you know a part of a hundred thieves now. Like what has that been like to see that progression of her? Um, definitely from the start. I already knew that Kaide would be a natural at streaming because she's very <laughs> charismatic and she's a lot more um, extroverted than I am for sure. So <laughs> I, 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 I didn't have a doubt that she was going to like make it big. I just didn't know like how long it would take. And I remember in the first like two months of her streaming and we, oh, this flies. <laughs> Okay, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Okay. Um, the first, the first few months of uh, her streaming, I remember I looked on her like business inquiries email, and it was a message from a hundred thieves or an email from a hundred thieves. I was like, what? I was like, already? <laughs> and uh, damn, it, it's it's like it's like when you it's like you have a kid and then you watch the kid like grow up like in an instant. <laughs> I, I don't explain it. That was that was, that was crazy. What? Yeah. So how? You, so you joined 100 Thieves, is it, if I'm not mistaken, five months ago? Yeah, in April. April, okay. Um, how how long did that, how long was that in the works? And was that something that you were interested in? Because for me, from the outside looking in, like, you know, you're a big supporter of, you know, the Sentinels and everything like that. Um, but w what was that decision on, you know, representing a different organization i mean a good one a very well respected and a good organization like that but what was that process like in in your thoughts on on doing that um so i did get offers from other orgs uh i won't really name them but um after looking at like all of my options i thought that 100 thieves was definitely the best in my opinion especially with uh helping out creators you know kind of grow and help nurture them and everything like that. So that being the reason why I did choose them. Um, and honestly, I think it's best that Tyson and I aren't on the same org, I feel like. <laughs> and it's like hard, hard to kind of explain, but in a sense, like we already spend a lot of time together. We live together and, mm -hmm. you know, we're still really young. Like I'm 19, he's 20, um, but I've like been living with him for like more than half of our relationship. So um in that sense like we already spent a lot of time together and I'll always like talk with each other and stuff so mm -hmm. I think like just adding in work with that would just be like not necessarily too much but we do need that like time away from each other just to kind of like do our own thing and have things to actually talk about mm -hmm. so uh that was another reason why I just thought it'd be good to uh represent a different org as well I, I'm gonna say looking at it like it's it's much better us working in the same field rather than us working in the same office because if we're working under the same org, we're always going to be doing content together. We're always going to be doing like everything together, and it's definitely good like in a healthy relationship to have your your time away and like be able to be yourself for a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one yeah one hundred percent. Um, I I personally have been you know I came from the Call of Duty scene, and so I I've watched a hundred thieves you know completely just you know blow up and go from the first days of it to to where it is now um i do want to talk about nade shot for a little bit because that's someone that i admire i know that he's like i know for a fact that he's you know been here and he knows what he's doing he knows what he's talking about was was he a big uh has he been a big help i i assume so and because it you said you've been not been streaming for or you've been streaming for under a year um so it is kind of somewhat new and you know you do need some sort of help in a sense of guidance but how has he been oh he's been absolutely amazing like uh he is a really busy person so i'm not always able to talk to him mm -hmm. but there's like a lot of staff to back it up as well um but when i am talking to him or we have like team dinners or you know like um with my team and his team and we all go out like it's just really nice to just sit down and talk to him just about everything you know because mm -hmm. he's started 100 thieves from like the ground up and yeah. he's grinded super super hard and he definitely deserves to be where he is at now um but just talking to him 
uh, I can just tell he genuinely cares about all the talent and everybody that, you know, work for him as well. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it's funny. He's, he's a super outgoing person. It's like just a bright light. And regardless of how much like energy you have or how much you could like even try to match it, you'll never compare to like his energy level. It's absolutely insane. I don't know. I'm sure you can uh, agree with that, Tyson. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I have never met someone more like I, I don't know how to explain it like passionate or like he's very expressive, very like himself. I, like nobody else is like nature. He's himself. Yeah. So, like I just think in the whole process of everything from being picked up to, you know, like getting to meet him and talk to him as well as mm -hmm. other creators, like yeah, he's definitely been a big help for sure. Yeah. I do want to pause for a second. I, I'm I did get a Discord notification. I forgot that I turned my online off. I'm gonna turn do not disturb off or on quickly. Um, <laughs> Sounds good. Okay. Um Um Alright. I'll I'll just cut that out. Um going off the Nade Shot leadership, um, your teammate Tyson uh is someone uh Shazam is someone that I've watched from I, I wasn't into CS uh, a ton, but when I watched him uh, back when he was on Optic many years ago, that is someone that I um, gravitated towards because of his laugh. That is, that, is one, that is the one thing that I noticed when he was in the Optic videos. I was like, I love this guy. I love his energy. And so I had been following Shazam for a while. And then when Valent came out and then all everything that transpired, transpired. Um, and he's, you know, you guys are one of the top teams in the world. Um, and so naturally, you know, Shazam was my favorite player. So Sentinel's my favorite team. And then that's kind of everything. But he is also, you know, your guys is uh, IGL and not only just an in-game leader, but I assume he, he has been here for a long time. So he knows what's going on and, uh, you know, what to do. So how is... How has that as a, you know, player to player relationship gone in his leadership? Yeah, so definitely like looking at Shaz, he, he's the team dad for, for sure. <laughs> um, he does everything. Like I'd say all of us were like his kids and then he's just hosting like a, like a school for us. But um, he's very like experienced. He's very mature. But then at the same time, I would say we're not too far in like an age range from him. So mm -hmm. at the same time, he still knows how to have fun. And I feel like maybe sometimes if you have like a huge age gap within the team, like a 16 year old and like 30, you might <laughs> not have like the same chemistry, but I, I, I feel like <laughs> well, well, I, well, I'm just saying like, I, it's really, it's really like easy to get along with people like roughly in your same age range. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> or what were you gonna say? So, no, I just get when, when he said sixteen and thirty. Like I don't know why there, two people just specifically popped up yeah, in my head. Same. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I don't know. I'm just. I'm, I'm just. I'm stating like a broad like no, topic I, I, right there. I get you. I get you. Mm -hmm. Um, just like the different views on life and like different speeds at which the the people like I don't know like a sixteen year old might be really fast, whereas like the thirty yeah. year old might be just like have a slower life. He might like be more chill and stuff so it's like sometimes like a lot of people that are like older will get annoyed by kids or something like that or yeah, like yes that's true so that that's why i was like putting that into a topic because like i know looking at me sometimes like if a kid's like a little bit too like woohoo running around the house i might be like uh like <laughs> you have the energy for that yeah yeah i mean it is a different obviously i'm not a pro but like i i, I assume it's a different you know there's lots of different styles of play it might not mesh together well just certain things i mean everything's got to be taken into account when it comes to how that relationship is men together uh do you guys do you feel as if um that you kind of do you i'm just i'm kind of blanking on that question um i i do want to i'm just gonna transition to uh just some little questions that um that might just be like one-liners or something i am curious what what mouse are both of you guys using 
Oh, Starlight. Sorry. Oh, okay. <laughs> how, how are you liking it? Do you want to go first, Ty? You're like the most expert. <laughs> well, you you can go first because I'm kind of like in I'm, depth. I'm different with the mice, so. Okay. Uh, yeah. So like, I've tried a wide variety of mice, and like, mm -hmm. I know a lot of people don't watch me for necessarily gameplay. It's more personality. <laughs> uh, but I don't know. Like, I uh, heavily uh, rely on like my uh, wrist. So mm -hmm. I like something super, super light. And mm -hmm. this is literally like the lightest mouse on the market right now. And I love it. And, uh, you know, it's a lot better. Like, it just feels like it fits in my hand better than like the G Pro, mm -hmm. which uh, just like really uncomfortable. It's too big. Yeah. <laughs> I'd say for me, I, I like the mouse a lot too. Um, I, I've always, I'm always weird with mice. Like one day I'm feeling something, one day mm -hmm. I'm not. Like I'll, I'll literally like drop a 30 bomb in like a map and then suddenly I'll just be like, you know what, this is not the mouse and then switch. And so I always do this thing where like I just switch back and forth between different stuff. Uh, but right now I definitely think this is probably the best mouse for me and that's why I'm giving it a whirl. <laughs> I, I have been using the super light recently, which I personally love. Um, and I, what also another thing is the mouse pad what what pad are you both using okay so actually i got this sent to me by a company oh sh is it ty what is it called gamestop what is it not gamestop <laughs> it's like it's, i don't know it's... anything about anything um i'll pan it down but it's like a pinky is it... swirl no no what's the logo in the middle uh what? g something let me just double check they, they sent it yes yeah they sent it to our uh, PO box. Yeah, I don't like remember. I don't remember the brand. It's like, oh, no. it's like gaming, yeah. gaming Game. score or something like that. I don't remember. It's like I have the box. Be your box. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> right now I'm using the artisan. I actually do like the artisan. It's nice. What, um, what hard, like you know? Oh the... yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm on the zero with extra soft. Okay. I haven't pulled the plug on an artisan mouse pad yet, but I I I get told to a lot and yeah okay uh, uh, straight up with the artisan pad, um yeah. I do think it is overhyped. Don't buy it for like you know how they have like insane and in, like imported fees. So like yeah. for example, I bought my mouse pad for like one hundred twenty dollars. That is just that's not it. That's not the play. If you get, but like. If you go to Japan and they have like the the artisan store, like an artisan pop up, you can actually buy the mouse pad for like fifty dollars or something like that. If the, okay. you can get the mouse pad for that price or like fifty seventy dollars range, I definitely think it is worth it. Um, these fast or these pads are a lot faster than normal pads that I've used before. Like mm -hmm. that's that's why I had to go to the extra soft. I was using the soft prior, um, but even the soft was like I couldn't control it. It's just way too quick. Mm -hmm. I couldn't figure out the brand. <laughs> it's okay. I lost it. It's all right. <laughs> well, do you do you like it? Have you enjoyed it so far? Or do you not? I do really anything? like it. Uh, yeah, I really like it. What was the one I was on, Ty? Oh God, it was like the Logitech one. Mm -hmm. Oh, you were on the G640 or G640? something like that. Oh God, you have is to it, like replace the... it all the time. But mm -hmm. you know what I did? Well, I only use like a small portion of my mouse pad because I use wrist and higher mm -hmm. sense. I just flipped it around and I used the other part of it, but yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm a person who I really enjoy mouse pads, and um, like I, I was telling Tyson that I was I was planning on getting a artisan one, but it's it's just I can never justify spending, you know, because they are every place you look they're like a hundred bucks. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, don't do that. Trust me. <laughs> one they're, thing. They're nice, but. Yeah, one thing with the artisan pads that I do quite enjoy is a lot of mouse pads um, have coating on them, and the coating will normally wear off within mm -hmm. like two to three months. So, uh, what mouse pad are you rocking right now? I use the Glorious X XL or something. Okay, I I've never used the Glorious before, but like looking at like maybe like the GSR, like the Logitech one that Kaide said, or there's like a HyperX mouse pad, the Fury. Mm -hmm. Like those mouse pads have a coating, so the mouse pad feels really amazing for the first like two to three months, depending on how much you play. But after then, it will feel really like different and not so great. Mm -hmm. And what I like about the artisan pad is no matter the humidity, no matter what, there's no coating on it. You can wash it, 
Um, it's definitely like a long term pad that will feel the same no matter what, and that's what I kind of enjoy about it. Yeah, it's, I've definitely heard good things about it, but um, so you you got back from Berlin not too long ago, correct? Yeah, um, it was like a month ago. Yeah, uh, how was that? It was super exciting to watch. Uh, I mean, the Valorant productions, uh, everything is just incredible. Yeah. Uh, I I really enjoyed watching. I watched your stream, Kaide, uh, <laughs> of all of it. And um, how was that for you being there first first hand experience? First hand experience, it was pretty cool. Um, it's really, it was cool to see all like the different stuff that they did between like Iceland and man, this fly is. <laughs> Wait, I think I caught it with my hand. Um, dude, this thing this thing is taunting me, but. It, it's um it's really cool to see like the different levels of like how they're trying to increase the production so the first um the first land it was just like a normal stage whereas like this one had a fully like glass stage and there's like tvs on the bottom so they could like create the the images of like the map or stuff oh that's i remember what, that's what it was. yeah yeah so we were i remember we were at, like before the match was starting and i was looking down at the ground like in the middle of stage up from my seat and i went wait guys Look at it, it's on the map in the middle. I didn't even notice. And everyone's like, You didn't see it? <laughs> like I was so like blown away by just like the different levels of stuff. Um but yeah, first hand, like it, it was fun. Everything was fun. I uh, I imagine um from what I've seen of like the old CS lands, um, I even played at a Call of Duty LAN event back in like twenty fifteen with the you know, like you know the jank LAN events where they're like yeah, these yeah. set up tables and stuff like that. <laughs> so I I've experienced a little bit of that. But what what was your like? Did you play in those, you know, messed up yeah. LAN events? Yeah. So um, <laughs> I I played. Wait, so you played from console, right? Yeah. So did you did you have to bring your own Xbox? No, we uh they they had some. There. Oh, okay. Okay. So uh one like a lot of the lands that are locally hosted are just kind of like they don't have um the greatest budget uh yeah. they're not able to buy their own pcs so a lot of the time you have to like bring your own pcs this happened a lot in cs so a lot of P like lands i went to were in vancouver so i had to take like a three-hour ferry to go to vancouver from my island uh, vancouver island mm -hmm. and i would have to lug around my pc and my monitor so what i did was i got this big suitcase i just stuffed my pc into the suitcase and i got the monitor i put it on top and i would like i, I would have both of them stacked up and then i would hold them and just like run with it <laughs> and uh man it was it was awful like commuting to to places with just like a, a pc and a monitor not not the greatest thing and one time i was almost late for the ferry and i had to run because the ferry was leaving in in seven five minutes so I actually had to sprint with those two things, and I almost like <laughs> dropped it. That doesn't sound very fun. Uh, I couldn't even imagine bringing my own, you know, PlayStation, let alone a whole computer. Yeah. Uh, what about? Um, I've I've heard some things uh, from streams and stuff about you guys possibly moving to Los Angeles. Is that yep. is that a plan and? Uh, do you guys have like a timeline or what like what's what's the deal with that i i personally think we'll be moved by next year but yeah. uh i'm i did some big dumb things i lost some important documents uh someplace and so <laughs> i had to everything's getting delayed because of me we had to reorder some <laughs> documents from the government <laughs> which takes like okay. almost a month and stuff but yeah yeah we're uh yeah november is really really busy we're actually going to be i don't they haven't uh, announced us yet i don't know when they're gonna announce us but we're going over for a uh, are we supposed to leak that <laughs> you can cut it out uh in uh at the beginning of november um mid uh november uh tyson has some photo shoots and stuff to do with the sentinels team in la mm -hmm. and then uh end of november i think we're both going to berlin so we 
Mm-hmm. Don't really have much time to do a lot of moving and stuff until after Champions, most likely. But we'll probably be signing our lease to a place when we are in LA for like the mid November period. Are you guys so. excited for for that? To move yes. To LA? Yes. I'm really excited, but I don't know. There's a lot of like uh, things to worry about too. I guess mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, healthcare you... is not free over there. <laughs> oh, trust me. I I I know. I have, like like I told you guys before. I I won't get into it too into it, but uh, I have diabetes, and here it is the the worst to have. I yeah. Diabetes. I heard that uh, like some people actually just die because they can't even afford their medicine. Sure. Uh huh. Yeah. I mean, the, the biggest thing that everyone says is turning twenty six is a death sentence because that's when you get off your parents' health care in, in America. So it is, I mean, I, I, I'm, you don't have to worry about me, but I, I'm very fortunate to be in a situation that I am, but other people are not. So that's, that's one of my big missions um, as a content creator is to advocate for stuff like that. Yeah, of course. <clears throat> but going off that topic, <laughs> um, yeah. uh, what, what is something that you, uh, you guys, like about you know america that canada doesn't have something light you know um something i like about america they have chick-fil-a i mean you guys don't chick-fil-a we Uh, do in like major cities but we live in a really small town we have like Mm -hmm. what ninety thousand people in it i don't know that's something really small it's pretty small for us ninety thousand small for you we we don't even have like a twenty four seven McDonald's where we are. So yeah, like at, at midnight, it's just like if you're hungry, you're fucked. Like I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. If you don't have if you don't have a stockpile of food, you're dead. Like, <laughs> uh, well, I I grew up in in a town of two thousand people. In it. Oh my oh, okay, god. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's no more was... complaining for us. No, 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 it's good. But I also I also grew up in the middle of Iowa, so. Like it's not, there's there's nothing. At my backyard was a cornfield, and I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> oh wow! And I mean, I still live in Iowa, but I live in a bigger city now. But yeah, yeah. I I didn't think ninety thousand was too small. <laughs> was there a twenty four seven McDonald's there? No, we didn't even have a McDonald's. What? Okay. <laughs> okay. No. Uh, the only thing that the only thing that you would probably know is that we had one rest, we had two restaurants, but one that you would know, and it's Subway. And so I, okay. ate, I ate Subway for 18 years of my life until I moved out. Of oh my! Oh. It was awful. <laughs> it was awful. Yeah. Uh, what is one thing that you guys will miss about Canada, though? The scenery. I have not been a really outdoorsy person after <laughs> starting to date Tyson. <laughs> uh, but before I used to like really do like a lot of outdoorsy stuff. I went sailing mm-hmm. with my dad when I was younger. I did a lot of like skiing uh you know soccer swimming like all Mm -hmm. that stuff and um here on the island uh a lot of people like travel around the world to like come here and see everything so i think that's one thing i'll definitely miss it's just super beautiful yeah i'll definitely say i i've been taking it for granted my entire life because i've only lived here and I, i think a lot of the time when you like when you live somewhere, you might not appreciate the things that are like special to this area. So yeah. something that's special, which I was really disconnected from and Kaide kind of pulled me into was uh, more of like the nature aspect of where we are. We're on the islands. Uh, there's water all around us. There's trees all around us, a bunch of hiking trails. There's a bunch of stuff you can do, zip lining, everything outdoorsy. And it's just like an amazing place if you're really like athletic or um, a healthy person. <laughs> um, but i i know for a fact like when you, when you go to the city you, there's not necessarily like a day where you just be like oh let's go to the river and just jump in you know <laughs> yeah so i i think that's definitely one thing that uh that i'll miss because we were like pretty spontaneous about when we we did like out, outdoorsy things well you i do you guys travel i mean i know you obviously tyson have have gone to you know iceland and berlin in the past you know a couple months but n- have you guys gone any places like really cool um well i would sometimes just uh go wherever he went for like cs like uh, he was in <laughs> i was in uh japan 
uh, for a funeral. But um, he was in Dubai for CS, and so I flew over there. And yeah. uh, <laughs> that was an experience. <laughs> um, I wouldn't Dude. say it was like the most fun in the world, but uh. it was something new. <laughs> D- Dubai is crazy. We got lost in the mall for like six hours. We were yeah. trying to we were trying to find the how to exit the mall for at least a minimum two hours. We like kept we were looking circling the same wing. Yeah, no, we One circled wing is like oh my god. No, it, it blew our world when we were trying to exit too, and then we discovered this new area that we never discovered. And this new area led to three different new areas. Yeah. And it's like, oh, did you know there's an upstairs? I was like, oh my god, it's too much. Like we were completely lost. And there's a whole ass aquarium in the mall. Like a whole aquarium. And it was insane. We went like through like the tube. There's just a lot of stuff. I don't know. Like uh, we're planning to uh, go to Japan. We were planning for December, but that's probably not going to happen with COVID and everything. But hopefully by next year, restrictions will be a little bit lighter. So we'll Mm -hmm. be able to go. So that's one place we are definitely looking forward to. How How is that? I mean, you guys are like you said on an island but how how is the the kind of covid craze over there um as of right now like no cases or like well not no cases but it hasn't really been spiking a lot i think that's more on the mainland Mm. more than anything else Mm -hmm. like we're pretty good and uh only vaccinated people are now allowed to go out and eat in public and stuff so okay you know it's uh it's a lot better i'd say Mm-hmm. And is is all do all the Sentinels players do they all live in Texas? Right? Yeah, they they live in uh, Austin, Texas. Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, I thought this was cool. Do they all live in the same apartment complex? Um. Yes, yeah, so they live like they're all like walking distance of each other. Like you okay. could literally like Shaz could leave his apartment, walk to Zom's place in like a minute, or like is dapper he could probably walk to like their place in like three minutes or something like that so they're they're all like relatively in a close area um some of them are in the same uh area but others are like in a different building i brought that up because i I saw a a clip of it was like shaz or zoms they went to to give them one of the is it the starlight mouse um Uh, i saw him what were you gonna say Oh, no, no, I wasn't going to say anything. Oh, I, was, no. I was listening. I, I, I don't know. They they went to go run and grab a, a final mouse, and I, I just thought it was funny. Um, <laughs> yeah. uh, I do want to I, I wanna touch on something that I found quite interesting. You're, you have uh, your collection on Valorant. It, you go for a red theme. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and I didn't realize that you don't you don't buy skins that often. You don't have as many skins as people thought you would. Yeah. Um, I I just... I, I see as, like, um, skins are things that I will buy only if I'm going to use. And mm. so, in, in a game like this, I'm not going to just buy every skin to have every skin. Like, I, I think it's kind of like a waste. I could... <laughs> dude, if I... You could probably, like... With all the skins that are coming out, you, you can put, like, a down payment on a house. These skins are expensive. Mm-hmm. Like, these bundles. Mm-hmm. So really like i only realistically buy skin bundles that i know i'll try out or i'll know i'll use because what's the point of me owning like the like the world war themed skins if i'm never going to touch them what's the point of me having like prime 2.0 if i don't like any of the color schemes so it, i'm just really like i try to save where i can and i still like spoil myself a little bit mm-hmm. i i re- i regret you're 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 making a good choice because I regret buying so many skins that I bought, <laughs> like the origin yeah. the origin bundle. I never touched it. And, and yeah, I hate me it. either. Yeah, yeah. I don't touch origin either, and I, Alan had a red one. I just I just convince myself it's all tax write offs. <laughs> it's yeah, so no, bad. No, kind of. Yeah, I'm guilty of exactly what Tyson doesn't do. It started <laughs> off with the glitch pop and all my moderators like my twitch moderators i'm like really close with them Mm -hmm. uh but they were like wow it's like super cute i really like it and i had never bought anything prior to that bundle and um i was like this is such a dog shit (laughs) bundle what are you guys talking about and they were like no it's so nice so i looked at the variant and like 
I think I just like in my head convinced myself I liked it even though I didn't like the uh the red gold and black variant of it mm-hmm. so I bought the whole collection and then that's where the addiction started and I was like oh <laughs> okay now I have the skins for these guns now let's go on to all of the others and now I have so many nice skins so oh god that's just bad. I feel like the way that the skins are are like produced it kind of makes you feel like you're like a Pokemon trainer and you have like a Pokedex and you're trying to collect them all. Like, yeah. dude, it, it it literally like taunts you when you open up the thing. It's like, oh, 15 out of 26 are owned. It's like, what? <laughs> it's like I want to collect. I want to collect all of them. Yeah. Um. But I, I don't. I I think if you actually bought every single skin in the game, I think it would be at least like ten thousand dollars. There's like, one person that does. Yeah. Have all the skins. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Bought every skin. Yeah. Yeah. So, I I I don't I don't know like. Well. <laughs> What's worse is they you can go see how much money you spent. I don't want to see oh. that. I don't want to see, I don't want to see that. You know? I don't either. What? Oh god. Wait, you no, didn't I'm did not you take... not know that? Ah, uh, I thought you could like uh not to the exact no, like they, scent. No, they give you the exact scent. And that's that is what oh, god. makes me ill when I look at that. I think I yeah, have. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna I look at I that. I think I have like fifteen hundred spent on it, a like USL, oh. and the, I, I don't, I, I'm not that good that to, to justify that. So. <laughs> no, I feel you. I, oh my god. I kind of wish I could see like my total amount of spent in gaming in total, because like I've, man, as a kid I wasted so much money. Uh, I remember like I would yeah. just buy like a game, play it for like an hour, and then just completely stop playing it. Or I remember something I was really big into when I was playing CSGO was I was really big into opening cases. So like every birthday or every like Christmas, I would get like a hundred dollar steam card. I literally buy all the keys and mm-hmm. just like try to open case to get a knife. Never did. Uh, I've lost hundreds doing that. I know I've spent a lot of money playing Genshin Impact, probably more than Valorant actually. Yeah, really? that's enough of that yeah. game. Oh no, my God. No, that, that game, few that game. thousand. few thousand probably, yeah, I agree. Yeah, minimum. Well, my problem is, is I will get on a game that I haven't grinded at all, and then I'll see that they have some sort of store system, and I'll start buying stuff before I even am actually fully immersed. When the Apex craze came out, I ha- I have like seven or like five or six heirlooms, and <laughs> I haven't touched Apex in like a month. You and know what? Uh, originally um i remember before i joined c9 and cs i was originally looking at apex as really? like a potential game i could play and so i grinded apex for a whole month just non-stop playing just grinding every day and i spent quite a bit of money on the skin packs i remember and it was because i played wraith or whatever that character, character's name was and mm-hmm. you could buy like the you get like the the dagger yeah as your melee weapon the kunai yeah yeah so not not too pro- not my proudest moment, but that's I it is what that. it is. That's cool. I I because I know Zoms was a was an Apex pro, and he's really good. I I love watching him play Apex. Uh, is there is that ever a thought in your head? Like before Valorant, was there other any games that you were like, I'm gonna go pro in this one? Um. No, I'd say first, like, CS just really spoke to me uh, when I first started playing it. Mm-hmm. And I just really liked the the concept of, like, how you could always feel like you're improving in some way. Yeah. Um, and just, just, like, how in-depth the game was. Like, the movement system kind of drew me in the most. Because I used to surf, I used to bunny hop, play mini games, a bunch of stuff. So just, like, seeing all that, like, little fine print details of the game and trying to, like, master each point was pretty fun. Um, I, re- I remember, though, like, after I played CS for a few years, and I'm looking at like the Dota prize pools for the the <laughs> international, stuff. yeah, I'm yeah. like, I'm like, fuck, man, I picked the wrong game, <laughs> like, seriously. The, those I'm... Dota prize pools are insane. They're crazy. Yeah, yeah. I'll chime in really quickly though. Tyson yeah. is insane at like console games. Really? Like, like just. I feel like you could have gone pro in like COD. I I, I used to I used to play so much Call of Duty. Yeah. And 
it was to the point where we would have birthday parties when we were younger <laughs> and my friends we would all play cod on like the four player screen it got to a point where my friends would actually ban me from playing at birthday parties because they didn't want to play against fun. me Aww. yeah they had no fun playing against me so <laughs> i ended up just being like just like the emperor that just like sat down and watched like the kids play <laughs> What what was your what what COD was that that you played? So my first Call of Duty was uh COD four. Okay. And after that I played World at War, MW two, MW three, Black Ops One, Black Ops Two, and then I quit at Ghost. So whenever Call of Duty Ghost came out, whenever Infinite War came out, I did not play any of those. Twenty thirteen, I believe. Yeah. That's when I quit too. That's like the, uh, that was like the, my first game. The glory days of Xbox for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was like Halo Three, Halo Reach, all the fun stuff. You know, it blew my mind. I remember like one of my cousins is like super into like COD, and so like when he found out that I was joining Hundred Thieves, he was like super happy for me and everything. Um, but I remember <laughs> I was Bailey. I was watching him play COD. And they were sticking and sliding to the wall. And I was like, what the fuck is this? This is not what I remember it ever being. So it's like, it's kind of funny how like so many things have changed like mechanically as well. So. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, like, I, I just didn't know that. I mean, it makes sense. You're, you're a gamer. But I, I think that's really interesting that you, you, you played COD as well, Kaide? I did, yeah. It was like my first like actual game that I ever played. But this is uh, Valorant's my first PC FPS. But mm -hmm. I played COD with my dad. Like, he bought the Xbox 360 for a um, Christmas present in like elementary school, and it was just the both of us that grinded it. <laughs> and then I think we stopped because I started getting better than him. Is what he said. <laughs> but yeah. Um. So how was that? Because I recently, I mean, within the past. I played the beta on on Valorant and um but I was I was not good whatsoever. So but I recently made the full switch. I haven't touched a controller in probably I mean getting close to a year. I I don't really play games on controller ever. Um yeah. but how how was that for you to to learn the mouse and keyboard? For who? Who? Which? Uh, who's the for, question oops. for? Uh, for you, Gary. For Gade. me? Yeah. Okay, my bad. Um, no, you're good. <laughs> horrible. <laughs> it was so bad. No aim assist. Like, what was this? Like, I actually had to use like my brain. Like, I remember <laughs> I had to like learn the concept like crosshair placement. That was like my mm. number one like most tricky thing. Like, Same. looking back at it now, I was uh, I remember watching like uh, when I first started playing with Tyson. Like, the POV of me is literally still looking down at the ground, and it's like the funniest shit ever um but no like it was definitely tricky but like i've gotten super super used to it to the point where it's like i think i'm better on mouse and keyboard almost than i am on like a remote i think mm -hmm. yeah it's fun do, I like you, it. do you guys play any other games i know you mentioned uh is it genshin or genshin impact oh uh, yeah genshin I, I was playing genshin for a little bit it's kind of like just like anime Mm -hmm. breath of the wild mm -hmm. that, that's that's how i would describe the game like it's it's really it's like open world you do what you want you just like go explore do missions it's just really like lighthearted. and it's like a game i need personally like on the side because yeah gaming it, it's different when you're when you're a pro player and stuff when gaming actually becomes your job to a point then yeah. you might not enjoy all aspects of it rather than like when you were originally just playing the game for fun yeah yeah I couldn't imagine that aspect of it, honestly. Like, I still, like, even tell Tyson to this day, I'm like, I, I don't think I could ever be pro in anything. Like, I don't know. Like, I think it's really, really cool that a lot of kids do want to do it, but I feel like it's really glorified and people don't really talk about the struggles and the, like, a lot of things that go into being a pro as well. And maybe for some, it'll be super easy and they could transition. But for me, like, seeing the outside of how it can affect people is just like, no, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I, I agree with Karde. I, I do think that having uh, pro gaming or having uh, like content creation as like your dream career can, it, it is very glorified in the aspect that you don't actually know and see the negatives. And only when you are in the position where you're an actual pro player, where you're like a pro streamer, uh, you 
start to see like all the negative comments because you got to realize you're still at the on the internet at the end of the day Mm -hmm. and the internet is still like a very like anonymous place and a lot of people when they have monitor confidence they say uh not the nicest comments yeah i that's that is something that i did want to touch on because you said not only pro play uh pro being a pro player is glorified but also content creation is extremely glorified and people think it's all just you know sunshine and rainbows um but not not until recently and obviously you guys have you have it on a more major scale than i do but not recently have has my stuff actually been seen and i mean it's it's not it's not all bad but there is a negative that people don't talk about or realize especially when you're not a content creator um at all but how how is that i I, this question is directed towards kaide how is that for you to be thrown into it what's what kind of negatives have you experienced i mean not only being a streamer sorry for the long question but not only a streamer but you're a female streamer which also comes with more negatives yeah for sure i uh i remember like at the start of everything i definitely like my legs were grabbed on by the ankles and just i was chucked into the deep end for sure um Mm -hmm. and having to really like adapt super quickly to you know like starting off with a few few thousand viewers as opposed to you know like a few and growing and progressively like growing in like a strong community right so it's Mm -hmm. it was really wish-washy at first where like you know like not a lot of people knew me so they would I just get like a ton of hate more than I'm sure like a lot of normal people would. And um, I'm super thankful for the position I'm in for sure. Cause like, I know there's a lot of people that dedicate so much like hard work and time into this and you know, I've had it so much easier and I do know that like I do, Um, but it does come with a lot of hate at the start for sure. I remember like um, people (laughs) Like, I don't want to touch, like, super into all of, like, the hate that I got, but it, I get called, like, gold digger or, you know, like, clout chaser and all this stuff. It was before, like, people really knew about Tyson and I's relationship, mm-hmm. and it really pissed me off, I'm not going to lie, because they would say these things without knowing anything about either of us or mm-hmm. our relationship at all. But also, it made sense because I didn't really talk about it at mm-hmm. the time. But, like, now there's a lot more people that know about our relationship, and so, like there's not that much comment about that sort of stuff but um on the topic of like females in gaming i definitely have to admit it's more difficult Mm -hmm. and uh it seems like a gate kept in a sense like a where i feel like there's like the stigma where it's only men that are allowed gaming and stuff and i'm not saying that i'm good at gaming like (laughs) girls just want to have fun too you know i'm I'm sure not every guy is good at gaming either and they just want to like take it casually and have fun um, but you know, like sometimes like for myself, like I was never scared to like ever talk in voice call. Cause like, I don't really give a shit. Like people can say whatever. And like, it doesn't bother me too much, but that being the reason why like a lot of girls like to watch me too, because I feel like a lot of them are kind of scared. And so like, I try to be the voice for them at least. And, yeah. uh, to speak up if you're, you know, getting bullied and whatnot, <laughs> um, and then there's other times where I just don't really give a shit and I don't care to chime in because mm-hmm. it just causes more drama and unnecessary stuff. But yeah, it's it's really tricky, I think. And, uh, you know, I don't think anybody will ever get used to it, really. It's just like kind of get numb to it, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like I remember when I first started, I'm Tyson knows this for a fact, I would cry every night after streaming. Like it was bad. And they got to the point where i was just like i don't want to do this anymore and i still have that sometimes too you know Mm -hmm. where i'm like i just i don't think i can do this this is really not good uh mentally for me because i'm not like i don't know it stuff bothers me still and i try to you know like appease to the majority of my audience but it really upsets me if like some people are like oh i don't really like you or whatever um but yeah it's uh it's i've gotten better at kind of like ignoring it not reading as many hate comments (laughs) That's one thing. I used to go on a clip on YouTube and just read all the comments. And it was like the absolute worst for my mental health. Tyson's Mm -hmm. like, shut that shit off and like stop reading it. Yeah. It doesn't do anything good for you. I I like, I 
during Kai Day's uh, like upbringing and in, in streaming and stuff, I just became like a counselor for her. So like every <laughs> every night, I'd be like, "Oh, what's wrong? Like, what's bothering you?" Yeah. And naturally, like it, it's just like human, like it's very like human to like instantly when you look at two different things and you see like a positive and negative, you'll always focus more on like a negative, especially if it's directly related to yourself. So it's it's similar to the aspect of like, oh, if you go gamble at the casino, let's say you won a hundred dollars. It's like, whoa, I won a hundred dollars. Cool. And then if you go to the casino, you lose a hundred dollars, it'd be like, oh shit, like I just lost a hundred dollars. So that feeling of loss rather than that feeling of gain is much higher weighted in just like the way your brain thinks naturally. So mm-hmm. I, I've been like slowly telling Kaide, like, even though that there might be a majority of people that do give support, the the hate will stand out like really frequently because it's just really it's really loud. Yeah. Yeah. Minority is very loud. Which it it definitely is and um but uh, but uh, it's also I I'm very glad to see I I when I wrote my notes um I try not to form too many questions so it doesn't sound so scripted but I did put something here that I that I did want to give both of you credit for um but I I feel like you guys are really yourself and un, like you know like Kaide you are you are very very good at what you do and you you as a streamer you're i said this before but you're not just you know tyson's boy or or girlfriend sorry (laughs) um yeah but you are like unapologetically yourself and i appreciate that about both of you that you know tyson you might be a little bit more quiet but you know i assume that's your personality and you guys are both very good at what you do oh thank you so much that actually means a lot to me i don't know like uh yeah i i don't know what to say <laughs> i, I it just it's good <laughs> i do want to touch on maybe uh one or two more things um yeah of course i want to know when when you're doing because i assume you are, you both are probably really busy um but when it comes to tiktok do you upload your own stuff no I have to tell you something. So I have a TikTok manager, okay. but I do go on my account and I read like uh, messages and I'm the one who replies to them. Um, but I have something about going back and watching myself that I can't do. It gives me like the ick. I don't know what it is. It's like hearing my own voice. It's just like, holy shit, seeing myself on camera. Like I can't do it. I don't know why. Like I can watch maybe like a minute or something or like a few seconds and I'm just like, please just stop um but yeah my tiktok manager is like really really nice where you know he um sends me like all the clips before he edits them and he's like what do you think of these are you good at these or do you not want these and i just like click on it and just see what it is it's like (laughs) yay or nay but that's like happy i'm happy Mm -hmm. that it's that way because i I can't (laughs) i i don't know if you notice this or not um but I, i commented on one of your tiktoks the other day um it was the omen one and i was like omen outplay that's what i said on it when you did the yeah yeah Yeah. i I thought that was a good clip i i enjoy both of your guys' tiktoks very well and i'm or very much uh do you you don't you probably don't upload your own stuff do you uh i used to so originally i was uploading my own instagram and um (laughs) i don't think i don't think i did tiktok so um I, i did instagram at first and thing about me is i'm very particular about clips if Mm -hmm. i'm uploading them i need them to be like perfect for like my eyes to see them as like impressive (laughs) like impressive enough to like show people so like the 360 clip that that clip was like that's a clip i can be proud of whereas like other Mm -hmm. clips um maybe like to to someone who hasn't played valorant as much they might see it and be like whoa like that was awesome but i i've played so much counter-strike i played so much valorant where i'm not too sure like what makes a clip stand out and so Mm -hmm. i was just really picky in particular about stuff and therefore i'd like upload one clip a month two like two clips every three months or something like that so i can't relate man (laughs) yeah i i had to i i definitely had to get someone to to pick out stuff that impresses people because i i'm not too sure like what's 
because like i have my own standards for like myself i'll say yeah which it, it makes sense um but i i promise you that a lot of a lot of the stuff i see from you <laughs> everything i see from you especially eh, that your grid shot is <laughs> yeah. oh god i i showed people your grid shot and and I Makes almost, me nauseous. yeah, was, my mom said the same thing, <laughs> uh, but I, I was, I almost, um, you, you just can't even understand it. You, when you're looking at it, you can't understand how your mind is going that quickly. Wait, texture. Do you want me to know? Like, uh, do you want to know like what he says to me? Like yeah. about like advice for it? Yeah. He goes, you zone out. Don't look at any of the dots specifically and just click it. And I'm like, <laughs> and you know, it's funny. It actually kind of works. Like you kind of zone out and like go blurry vision and you just like click everything. Yeah. And so instead of like hyper focusing on everything, but like, so I, yeah. like, yeah, when I, when I go back and like, if I look on a grid shot thing, like, yeah, I, I'd be like, wow, that is, actually is pretty fast. But like in the moments <laughs> when I'm doing it to me, it personally doesn't feel that fast because like I just, I grab my mouse, I look at the screen, and then suddenly, like, I just, like, everything goes blank. And I'm just, like, mm -hmm. oh, like, moving my arm around. <laughs> like, it, I don't have to think about it at all. I don't have to be, like, oh, there's a ball here, there's a ball there. Mm -hmm. Like, literally, how I see it is my brain draws a pattern. So I, I'll i be, like, oh, I'm going to flick to this ball, this ball, this ball. And then because there will be new balls spawning, it will create, like, a new pattern. So mm -hmm. that's like the way I can describe it. And my hand just automatically does it for me. I, I don't really know how to. That's crazy. I, I don't know how to describe it that <laughs> like that. But I mean, over over thousands of hours of games, I I mean, I hope I can be somewhat decent at something. Yeah, I, I am glad that you both now you both have said my my name because my TikTok is my negative comments come from that. I don't actually do this stuff. That's that's my biggest thing, especially with the Valorant voice actors. Everyone says that I they're all fake, and then I, you know, dub my face over them. So I'm very glad. What? Yeah. Hi everybody on TikTok. <laughs> we are talking to texture. This is not fake, by the way. Thank you. Oh my Thank gosh. <laughs> yeah, I get I, thousands of thousands of comments of how do we. One of the things that. It was kind of like a backhanded compliment. Someone commented, how do we let this guy get famous? He doesn't even do it. And I was like, well, you, I mean. But you like, no, here's the thing. <clears throat> they can say that, but they don't realize what goes behind the scenes and like getting all of this put together, <laughs> getting all of the, you know, like yeah. talking to other people, getting all of like the questions, everything. Like yeah. that, that in itself is a talent. And oh, like, I appreciate that. just like super annoying when talk shit over yeah, like every whatever. little thing that's what i, I like the mentality it's whatever for me I'll, it's just like i could go on and on about i'll definitely say you do you do have like talent for it because if you can make me talk then that's impressive because yeah. patty knows this i'm i'm a super introvert like I, I don't like talking at all like before for interviews and stuff <laughs> i'd never give like a two 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 letter answer like i'll be like yeah or something like that <laughs> so if you can make me for feel like natural in a call and make me kind of express my thoughts then definitely you're doing a, a great job so keep it up that yep. means the absolute world to me um yeah i i that made me speechless <laughs> <laughs> well um I, I don't even know what to what to say to that that was that was the ultimate compliment thank you so much <laughs> no problem um I do want to, uh, one more thing, either, and and if you guys don't have an answer for this, oh, I just muted myself. Um, <laughs> if, you don't, if you don't have an answer to this, it's fine. But either, what is some advice that you would like to share to me personally, or just out loud that you've received that is very good advice, in your opinion? If you need a moment to think about it or whatever, yeah, it is okay. There's two quotes that I have actually. Um, Are they stolen of, by me? Uh, <laughs> one of them could have been, well, one of them is definitely stolen by you. Uh, but one of them is hurt people hurt people. So 
by that, it just means like a lot of the hate that you get could be added insecurity or projection of other people Mm. onto you, you know, not even that. Maybe they just do it out of enjoyment. That's Mm -hmm. what I've found out. Um, And the best thing you really can do is ignore it. And I know it's really, really difficult because I'm really bad at that. Mm -hmm. And I shouldn't necessarily give advice on that. But, you know, just know what you're doing is really, really awesome. Right. And uh, at least for us, but people are going to hate regardless of what you do. You could like donate millions to charity and people will still have something Mm. to complain about. And then another one is ignorance is bliss. Uh, That's that's, that's my quote. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) That one, like I've lived by that since I started streaming. Like sometimes, oh God, sometimes you have to seriously just ignore so much to just be happy. Um, not necessarily ignoring like important things and like uh, running away from them, but just, I don't know, Tyson, you want to add on to this? I It's just like the, definitely like I, I live by the ignorance is bliss concept the most. And um, it's more of like, you, life is what you make it and really if you make life in simpler terms it just feels a lot better and your life is more simple it's mm-hmm. as simple as that so um that's what i personally live by and for me it, it definitely helped a lot in in situations that felt complicated i would just ignore a lot of stuff and just live life the way i want to live it mm-hmm. yeah getting too emotionally involved in stuff can really uh hurt you in the end yeah. is what it is like you have to you have to find like a detachment in a sense to this job like because a lot of people do know like about your personal life or at least for me like they know a lot about our relationship and stuff like yeah. that but you kind of have to like detach from all of it and just you know people are going to have opinions regardless of how nice you are or you know whatever but that's just what comes with the job i guess mm-hmm. so. i do want to say something about both of you very quickly you are both very genuine people and you made me feel very comfortable um i've met i don't have a lot of experience with uh meeting people who uh don't exceed my expectation um but sometimes these creators they're not the greatest people and you guys have 110 percent exceeded my expectations you are both amazing and i thank you very much Oh, thank you. That's super, super sweet. No, I, f- yeah. I felt like this was just like a hangout. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah. And that's what's really good. And like, uh, like I'll preface like what Tyson said before too. Like, like I said before, uh, especially like in interviews and other stuff, um, getting him to like talk and feel really comfortable <laughs> is difficult. So, <laughs> to you again. <laughs> oh, that's great. It's kind, of, it's kind of what I do, but I, 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 I'm glad that I'm doing it decently well. Um that is that is all i got for you guys i i appreciate it so very much and um i'm gonna end off the podcast here uh this is kaide intense thank you guys for a great episode and i will see you guys next time peace